And joining me right now to talk more about the week ahead is Tennessee Congressman Chuck Fleischman, a member of the Appropriations Committee. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. First, give us your expectations, what you would like to see in terms of priority from the president at his speech tomorrow in front of the U.N. General Assembly. Well, I'm so pleased now that we have an American president, Donald Trump, who is leading. Uh, he's putting American, America first, America's interests first. And what I want to hear from President Trump, as we've heard in the past, is when he gets in a forum like the United Nations, that America is going to stand up and be the world leader that we are the supreme superpower in the world, and he's going to address issues such as opioids, nuclear nonproliferation, things that are going to make the world a safer and better place. So there, there's issues around uh, denuclearization. There are issues yes. around trade. So let's talk about both issues. I mean, the, the battle with China, the latest round of tariffs have gone into effect overnight. The Trump administration imposing a 10 percent tariff on $200 billion worth of goods, Chinese goods sparking immediate retaliation from China. Beijing says it's moving forward with new taxes of its own on $60 billion worth of American products, including clothing and auto parts. Where is this going? I want to get to the national security issues now. Next, but your thoughts on where this trade spat goes from here? Sure. Um, obviously, I think China made a colossal mistake in refusing to come to the table to talk about this. The fact that China canceled uh, a hearing uh, and a meeting on this was clearly detrimental to the process. Let's face it, um, I've always been a free trader, but China, the problem with China goes beyond trade. Obviously, there's a trade imbalance, but they're taking our intellectual property. They have been a bad actor in this sphere. At some point in time, the Chinese are going to have to come to the table right. because as, as there's a retaliation back and forth, you're going to run out of dollars to tariff Maybe, or run but out I mean, of dollars to tax. But you're dealing with a yeah. dictator for life, right, Congressman? I yes. mean, you know, this guy is going to be in charge for the rest of his life. National Security Advisor and former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., John Bolton, joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures. And he laid out the issues going far beyond economic. It's about military power. Listen to this. This is not just an economic issue. This is not just talking about tariffs in the terms of trade. This is a question of power. The intellectual property theft that you mentioned has a, has a major impact on uh, China's economic capacity and therefore on its military capacity. And I think the president correctly understands that when China gets economic power by stealing from the United States and others, it's time to call a stop to it. And because what we've seen, Congressman, is China going out to the South China Seas and creating islands, creating islands that they say these are Chinese islands, even though it's not Chinese territory, it's the South China Seas and uh, belonging to others in the region. Then they're putting military bases on those islands. I would agree. Unfortunately, China has shown in the past and, and moving forward not only economic aggression, but military aggression, diplomatic aggression. It's all of the above. Uh, I think it's high time that the American people, and Donald Trump gets this, we have to understand that China is on a long-term mission, and the United States is going to have to play for that. That's why we've got to get our fiscal house in order. Unfortunately, we owe the Chinese a lot of money. They buy up our treasuries. Other countries buy up our treasuries. That's why we have to really start putting America first across the board, not only in the economic sphere, but we've got to get our fiscal house in order at home, because when we uh, borrow money from our foes, it yeah. puts us in a disadvantageous position. Bottom line, are we going to see more deals over the near term before the midterm elections that the president can talk about? I mean, I, I understand we're going to see a, an official close of a deal with South Korea either today or tomorrow. But what about Europe? What about Canada? How close are we? Very quickly, because I've got to get on to this confirmation controversy. Sure. Uh, China is, I'm sorry, Mexico, I think we've made unprecedented progress. I know uh, Jack Daniels is a constituent of ours in the state of Tennessee. President Trump has done a good job, I think, loosening up Mexico. Canada is another uh, story right now that's going to take, I think, a little bit more time. But I will give, I give the Trump administration high marks for addressing this region by region, country by country. Yeah. When you're dealing with China, Mexico, and these other countries, one size does not fit all. And I do think we need to remember this, too, that ultimately want all tariffs to go away, because if we can get to a free trade scenario, the United States can and will win. Let me, let me move on to the confirmation controversy. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Sure. 
Shaw and his accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, agreeing to testify this upcoming Thursday before the Senate Judiciary Committee. But now there is a second accuser. The story of Deborah Ramirez revealed in a new article from The New Yorker last night. In it, she claims Kavanaugh exposed himself to her in college. Kavanaugh is denying this allegation, but a new Fox News poll shows a record number of voters are now opposing his nomination. And the administration is uh, raising questions about the New Yorker story, and it's saying that the New York Times is actually raising uh, questions about it because the Times had interviewed several dozen people over the past week in an attempt to corroborate her story and could not find one with firsthand knowledge. Ms. Ramirez says she contacted former Yale classmates asking if they recalled the incident and told some of them she could not be certain that Mr. Kavanaugh was the one who actually exposed himself to her. And here we are. How does this play yes, out in your view? Yeah. Well, uh, obviously Thursday, the Senate Judiciary Committee will be hearing from Ms. Ford, and they will make their own determinations. I will say this. I saw, last week I went around talking to students about the Constitution on Constitution Day. And I held up that great document, and I said, this governs our nation. And unfortunately, now we are seeing the process break down. I never thought I would see the United States Senate act through a process that is so broken. When I saw Justice Ginsburg, uh, a justice with whom I have no ideological um, uh, uh, favor with in any way, yes, no similarity in, in any way, shape, or form. But uh, when she said the process was broken, we have got to get back to respect and civility in this country. We've got to uphold our institutions. The process is broken. We're involved in smear campaigns. We're involved in situations where it's political one-upmanship. Let's face it, the Democrats do not want a conservative justice on the court. Republicans want a conservative justice on the court. Ultimately, I believe Justice Kavanaugh will be confirmed, give everybody their say, and make the senators vote. Wow. So you think he'll be confirmed after the vote and the, the session starts October 1. You think he's going to be in place by October 1? We need a justice. Absolutely. Mm. We can't have a situation where it's 4-4. Right. And this is a justice who was vetted uh, in 2006, has served on the D.C. Court of Appeals with distinction. I hearken back to what uh, Justice Clarence Thomas had to go through. I saw those films, and I remember I was much younger then, obviously, and, and remember that. Justice Thomas has served with such distinction. I actually live right behind the Supreme Court when I'm in Washington, and I see the justices come and go to work. And I, and I think that poor man went through an awful lot then and yeah. how well he has served the court. And I believe Justice Kavanaugh, if given the opportunity, will serve the high court in the same great way that he has served the D.C. Court All of right. Appeals. We will leave it there. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll be watching the developments for sure.